What's up, you cheeky mother hubbards? Uh, welcome to another Punk Politics. I'm Aid Thompson. Let's talk about Sunak's North Sea oil drive, shall we? Now, you might have seen this. Rishi Sunak is announcing a plan to expand North Sea oil drilling. Now, he's framing this as an essential tactic to mitigate risk against the tumult, the geopolitical craziness of the international energy markets. You know, Putin, Ukraine, right? He says expanding North Sea oil drilling could result in an extra 50,000 jobs. He says we could look at things like carbon capture to offset the carbon footprint of the fossil fuels. Anyway, if you're like me and you're actually quite terrified of what looms for us with the climate crisis, then the idea of extracting more fossil fuels, expanding that carbon footprint, seems like crayon eating lunacy. So let's take a look. Why is he announcing this? Because first up, this wasn't in their 2019 manifesto. Boris Johnson, for all his faults, was actually something of a green advocate. Now, if you want to expand our carbon footprint, if you want to balloon our fossil fuel sector, then fine. But you're going to need a mandate to do that. You know, you can't be like, oh, hey, guys, uh, vote for me. We're going to meet our net zero target by 2050. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's my vote for you. Oh, yeah. No, th thanks for that. Yeah. Three prime ministers later and go f yourselves. Point number two. What they've done here is they've calculated that if they dangle a carrot on a stick in front of Scotland and say there's the possibility of 20,000 or 50,000 new jobs if we just spin up these new oil rigs. They've calculated that Scottish voters are sufficiently stupid that they believe that these jobs couldn't exist within a green revolution. Like, stick with us, stick with the Tories. We are going to drastically ramp up North Sea oil production. You can expect as many as 50,000 new jobs. Right, OK. I mean, couldn't, couldn't we all find employment in solar and wind production and lithium battery plants? And uh, let, let, let me just check. Uh, do, we, do we have any donors from the lithium and, and solar? In no, we, we don't. All right. Uh, no, no, sorry. I, I did check. Point three, drilling and then offsetting with carbon capture is not an efficient energy policy. It's just not. You know, if you move to renewables, you won't have to worry about apportioning, allocating a chunk of your profits or magicking 10 billion to hand to some carbon capture project, will you? It's just completely inefficient. Four, the main driver for this project seems to be, look, we need to guard ourselves against global instability. Situations like Ukraine, Russia, Putin. We need to have our own energy supply here so we're not impacted by that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, that does, that sounds very important. Yeah, no, thank, thank you for raising that. But listen, you will be delighted to hear that we already don't buy our energy in from Putin or Russia. We already get it from the North Sea and Norway. The fact that you're worried about us being impacted by global instability in the energy markets is actually a testament to the fact that we are subservient to the global energy markets because places like BP and Shell and Exxon sell all their on the global energy market. We don't get to keep the oil that they drill in the North Sea. This is the whole thing that's so disingenuous about like, oh, well, we should make use of our own oil. You know, we've got the North Sea oil. We should just extract it there. That's our oil. We should just leverage off that. Because here's the thing that will blow Tory voters' mind, right? Our North Sea oil is not our North Sea oil. It's only ours, you know, yours and mine, if we happen to hold shares. <laughs> and we don't. Well, I don't. Maybe you do. Now, here's the infuriating thing, right? We could have all benefited from our North Sea oil. Did you know in 1975, the Labour Prime Minister, Harold Wilson, set up the British National Oil Corporation and they could have extracted the oil and processed it and kept it here for our benefit. If we'd done that and we'd sold the oil and kept the profits here in the public coffers, we would now have an estimated 800 billion pound asset. And that is directly comparable to what Norway have achieved. That was the British National Oil Corporation. But can you take a wild guess, a wild stab in the dark, what happened to that company? Yeah, Thatcher fire sailed it. <laughs> and the production and exploration arm was handed to BP. 800 billion. Now, as a privately operating corporation, BP don't owe us any of that money or oil, they can ship it to wherever they like that's likely to generate the biggest profits, the highest returns for their shareholders. So where do you think they're going to funnel it? 
onto the International Energy Exchange, just like everybody else, your shelves, your Exxon Mobil. So if we can't even be guaranteed to be the recipients of this oil, and we, you and me, are not shareholders, and we don't need to use this to guard against global instability, why is Rishi Sunak pushing this? Well, I don't suppose it will shock you to hear that the Conservative Party have taken almost five million pounds in donations from climate change sceptics and fossil fuel companies. That's right, guys. Sunak's Conservative Party, with their commitment to transparency, integrity and honesty, just like every other Conservative Party before it, are doing the old brown envelope boogie. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Conservative Party are little more than an admin team set up specifically to sell policy to billionaires. That is it. And if you want to hear more about Rishi Sunak's faux commitment to the climate crisis, do check out the video I put up yesterday. Honestly, man, I'm so tired of their disingenuousness, their obfuscation, the, you know, like, would it be too much to ask if just once, if you truly hold a belief or an opinion in something, just come right out and say it. 